Today we pulled one of the godliest of rare champions, and we're going to go over that. By the way, this is my hair today. I woke up, and I was like, you know, we're just going to do this. Apothecary is somebody who I use even in the end game because he can make him really fast and he heals and he can solo some of the content and I say in the end game because he's still usable in Doom Tower in some secret rooms and in the Cursed City where he does solo some champions I think I had him solo the Scarab King by himself in a toxic set with a blood shield ring that's an end game build but still A1 not much to talk about his A2 is a heal it's a huge heal two turn cooldown so he's going to be giving out a lot of heals and then his heals can be crit i want to break this down for you guys and you can look this up i just looked it up on reddit but i i, I close it out his heals are multiplicative not additive the reason i say that it's not additive and i want to point this out just so you have full context because there are going to be some nerds out there who actually dive into the numbers i'm not one of them i look things up on reddit see it on reddit i believe it all right when you book him up you'll think okay it's 50 percent hp one two three 15 plus 35 50 percent right no because it's mul multiple it's multiplied by 35 percent so when you multiply 35 percent times 15 percent that equals 5.25 percent and then you add that and then you add or you add that 5.25% to the 40% to the 35% and that equals 40.25%. So really he's healing for 40.25%. And then it can be critical. So you want to build them with a 100% crit rate. So heals that crit are an extra 50%. All of this, let me let me bring it back here, guys. Okay. I just explained it for the nerds or whoever might want that kind of context, but if you're like me, simple-minded, all you need to know, Apothecary will pump out big green numbers with this A2. A3. Early on, you're not going to get too much of this, but you have, because it's going to be a while before I get High Katoon. Increase speed buffs on all allies and then fill turn meter of all allies by 15%. This is on a three turn cooldown. Now, you're probably wondering, where are you going to use Apothecary? The question will come up, where where do I use Apothecary? Look, early on, he's going to be great for you pretty much everywhere. In the campaign, he'll keep your one guy alive, whoever it is. Maybe it's Rathalos or Sun Wukong or Saurus. Keep him alive so that you can get the three-star content that you were looking for. You can put him in dungeons. He even has an increase to 21% for ally defense in the dungeons. Keep your team alive with the heals. Make it go faster. Clan boss is another one, and then arena. You could put him in your arena team. The way that you would want to set up an arena team using Apothecary or any speed booster in general is you want to have somebody with an aura speed to go first. You could even get Spirit Host if you don't have Sun Wukong. Spirit Host is a farmable champion in campaign. Use her, she gives like 10% extra speed, but Besides that, you want to build Apothecary as fast as possible so that he goes before the other team goes. That way he can boost your team up. Again, he's going to be the first one on your team to go. He boosts your entire team up, gives the speed up, and then your team can go ham on whatever it is that they want to do, whether it's placing the decreased defense or the weaken, the setup, and then nuking down. In my case, I'm just nuking because I don't have an AoE defense down champion quite yet. Okay. For now, he I, I just pulled him, so he's not going to be maxed out quite yet. So I don't want to give him a full dedicated video, but I will be doing that later once I get masteries for him and once I you know, level him up more. Because right now at 40, he's not much to speak of. But I took a note out of Gavin Master Raid's book, built him in a relentless set. He said it was really fun, so I thought, you know, I've never tried it. If I go into the chat, or if I go anywhere I ask, how do you build Apothecary? Most people, including myself, will just say speed. But, with Relentless, you get an 18% extra chance to take an extra turn. 
And that's pretty nice. That's pretty fun. So you want to build them fast, try them out in Relentless. I think I'm, you know, I've, I've tried them out so far. Haven't seriously been paying attention. I kind of just threw this on him. So his build isn't exactly showcaseable, but I'm going to talk about it here just in case you're in the early game. We got this Relentless set that we won from one of those really easy tournaments that they pretty much hand out to everybody when you first start playing, as long as you're a relatively serious player. And we put him in a speed set. So, where did I get speed set? I got it from Dragon. I farmed Dragon a few times just for the missions and, and this drop. So that's where I got the glove. But, boots. Let me break it down a little bit further. <clears throat> so, extra turns, big thing. You want him to take as many turns as possible. That's also why you make him go as fast as possible. Here are the pieces of gear if you want to see the pieces of gear. You would be prioritizing mostly speed and crit rate, and then HP defense to keep them alive. Unfortunately, I don't have too much of a selection when it comes to gear, so this is pretty much it so far. You would want HP percent on the gloves, defense is okay on the chest, but you want speed, crit rate. Now boots. It's kind of hard to come across speed set, speed boots. So let me tell you where I've been going to farm for speed boots. I've been going over to campaign on Brutal, and I'm here, oh, stage six, the Palace of Arabia. And you go here, you can see that the speed boots can drop at five stars. You come here to boots, it shows boots. You can farm any stage that you want for any specific gear that you might want. Here you can get the weapon, helmet, shield, gloves, chest, and boots right here, that's where I've been going. And I just run it over and over again until I drop speed boots. Last night I dropped maybe something close to like three, 400 energy. And I got four, three or four speed boots. I don't have a farmer quite yet. I'm still waiting to get source all the way up. And once he's maxed out or once I can get the chickens for it, I'm going to max out Saurus. Nice. But yeah, so that's where I've gotten speed boots. I am waiting to get five star speed boots. Before I max it out all the way, I want to wait. For now, I'm going to leave this at... I could actually bump it up to 12. But it takes forever to rank up gear, and I hate sitting here doing that. It's ridiculous. I feel like 40 is way too long to be waiting to have this type of quality of life. I have to wait to get a six star before I can continue down the main mission. Oh, you know what? We also have a sacred shard that I do want to pull. Just watching this drain is damaging my soul. There you go. What do we get? Defense. Defense is okay. There is no particular prioritization in this build. Again, I just threw whatever I saw in the filter mode on my phone. But you're looking for speed, crit rate. These are the two ones you're looking for first. And then you also want to focus on HP and defense. But don't follow this exact build. It's not It's not accurate. It's just what I had at the time. But eventually, once I get it there, I'll be able to provide a better showcase. Just, just keep in mind, this is like an early game build. You're working with what you have, which isn't a lot. It's pretty bad. We have a Sacred Shard that I do want to pull. You never know. Who should you prioritize? Honestly, either Duchess or the tree. But I don't know too much about the tree. I, I read his skill set once, but I do remember him being the bee's knees. Attacks one enemy, decrease speed, ignores res. If it's a target, AoE, decrease accuracy, block buffs, ignores res. 3 turn cooldown, increase res on all allies, perfect veil, if ally is under x amount of buffs, increase res, increase accuracy, increase damage dealt by 20%, that's pretty cool. I don't have him, but I know Duchess is awesome, so we're going to go with Duchess and Rector Drag. Now it says here... 15, 20, 25%. This isn't a straight 15% increase to 
your shard, by the way. It's still the same rates, but the way this works is if you wanted to, you could keep buying shards or pull a bunch of sacreds or voids or whatever you want, and eventually you would have a 25% increase chance to summon them. Do I think it's a great idea to gun for this? Oh, it's your money. You do what you want. Or it's your account. You do what you want. Am I going to do it? No, I got one yellow shard. I'm not going to do it. But we are going to pull this one shard and see what happens. You never know what you could get. You could get an epic. A Sinesha. Wow. Okay. And you see right here, Rector Draft now has a 20% chance. Sinesha is actually pretty good. AoE. She's a great arena champion. Before... I started doing Plat Arena on my main account. I was actually using Sinesha in conjunction with Skull Crown and Catacomb Counselor because he was an ally attack, but you could use anybody. So I would speed up with Arbiter, increase attack, and Sinesha and Skull Crown would work together as a blender team when I use the ally attack. They hit pretty hard, it's pretty nice. AoE, and then places an extra hit on enemies that have a 50% chance, Skull Crown has a extra hit based on enemies with more than 50% HP, so they make a great blender team. They're really two excellent champions that pair well with each other. But you can put Sinesha in like a stun set, or you could build her out like a nuker and she'll do it just for you. Her A2 will put a skill on cooldown and then heal the ally with the lowest HP by 25%. This does hit pretty hard, three turn cooldown, it's pretty nice. Especially for Arena when you want to put somebody's skills on cooldown. Then she has Immortality, 5 turn cooldown, heals everybody, and then balances HP of all allies. So you can bring your entire team up to full health as long as there's somebody on the team with full health. Increase to HP, but only in Faction Crypts by 31%. This is a win. 